What's up, everyone? It's me, your boy, Ryan Flowers, a.k.a. Clutch Sports Talk in the house. Welcome to edition of Film Study, Dallas Cowboys O-Line. But tonight, I want to kind of talk about, about Tyler Smith and uh, Jason Peters. But listen, let's take a look at one of the plays here we got here. Um, look at look at Tyler Smith, left tackle over there. You know, going into the draft or when we when we picked him up, we knew that he was a mauler, right? A guy that gets his hands on you and he's blocking you down the field, right? Um, as you can see here, I mean, he just erases that DN. Completely moves him out the way. Jason Peters, who didn't start the game, but he did come in later, actually had a nice little block here um, as well at the guard position. One thing you got to know about Jason Peters, he's a big cat. Big cat, right? So there he is lined up right there at the left guard position. Uh, they're motioning over, I believe that's C.D. Lamb right here. And, uh, you know, look, four-man front, you know, Giants were ready. They were ready to, uh, to to load that box up, but didn't matter. The Cowboys were ready to go. Uh, Cooper Rush under center. But focus right here, the hole that opens up uh, between Tyler Smith and Jason Peters as they get after it right here on this play. So, ball snap. Good job, Tyler Smith. Pretty much sets that edge, kicks out the DN, and now Jason Peters is in a pretty good position right here to get that linebacker. Um, but remember, Jason Peters is a big guy. And the fact that, you know, he kind of overstepped a little bit here as, as we'll roll the clip here in just a second, um, but he still was able to get a hand on that linebacker, right? So I'll roll the clip right there. You see the 59 is doing a good job. He's going to step back inside. But as you can see here, Jason Peters is going to go ahead and make that block right here to set up that little alley that the, that Tony Pollard needs, right? Tony Pollard's a little different runner than Ezekiel Elliott. He just needs a little bit of hole right there, and he's able to, to establish that. Now, the rest of the line, pretty decent job right there. Biotis, the center, um, you know, without that block, it, you know, right there from the from the initial part of the snap, this play doesn't get off. And as you can see there, Jason Peters pushes the linebacker into the nose tackle and he creates that hole right there. So very physical down blocking by the Dallas Cowboys on this play. Again, as we'll see, we're running the clip again and Tony Pollard's off to the races. So really good job at point of contact. Um, as you take a look at the other parts of the line, uh, Zach Martin, all pro. I mean, he's doing he's doing his thing with Terrence Steele over there. Um, you know, what can I say? What can I say? The Cowboys did a good job on this particular play. Uh, and the Giants are relatively a good run-stopping defense. I mean, they that's what they do, right? You know, their offense isn't that great, but their run-stopping defense is pretty notable around the league. But Monday night was just not the case. The, the Cow Dallas Cowboys were ready to roll, uh, and they did a great job, as you can see here. Tony, Tony Paul just getting out there. Uh, big gain, big gain on that play. <clears throat> All right. Let's take a look at the next play here, right? It looks like, uh, looks like they're getting ready to send a blitz. The Giants, um, they're crowding a little bit. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau is out to the left, but again, what a play right there. Tyler Smith, I mean, look, he's pulling. Any big man, any left tackle, if you play football and you're a guard or a tackle and they call a, some type of swing or a sweep or a counter where you're pulling, this is a dream come true. He literally doesn't even have to do anything on this play. He just puts his hand out, blocks the defensive back. This reminds me of Trent Williams a lot, the left tackle for the 49ers. That guy loves to get out in open space and just run people over. And that's what and that's what Tyler Smith is, that's what he's known for. He's a big dude, strong physical guy. He wants to knock the crap out of you. Point blank. As any lineman should, but more particularly, you know, this is what he wants to do. Jason Peters here, we'll take a look at him here real quick. Uh slight delay on the block, but you know, he's such a big guy that no matter what, and honestly, the play call was already out of there, so Zeke was already gone before that defender knew what was happening. So good job on that one there, but uh, really the focus was on Tyler Smith there on that particular play. All right, so let's take a look at the next the next clip here. Um, we'll get this loaded up for you. But again, you know, overall, the Dallas Cowboys did a good job uh, all night just blocking, uh, even in pass protection. You know, I really didn't see too many uh, deficiencies there overall, but definitely in the run game, this is where they made their, their money, right? And the Dallas Cowboys, they have to run the football. So if we take a look at this next play here, um, this is probably early in the game, but look, look how Tyler Smith, he stands up, he anchors down, gets his hands on, uh, on the defensive end right there. One thing I don't like about him is that, you know, he was known for a lot of holds in college. And the reason for that, because look at his hand placement. It's outside the pads, outside the shoulder. I would like to see him get inside a little bit more, right? Um, 
some veterans, which we'll see in another clip here in just a second here, where some veterans, they're good at, they start maybe on the outside and then they somehow switch their hands inside. Tyler Smith just wants to bear hug you. And honestly, going at him in a bull rush is probably not going to work more often, not because he's just a big, strong dude. Um, so he's going to have to clean that up just a little bit. He's athletic. I mean, he played left tackle. You can see, um, but he's going to have to definitely clean up the hand, the hand placement there in order to avoid some holding calls, especially against elite pass rushers. So he's, but he's only given up one sack. Next play here, you can see here, again, hands are outside the pad area on the shoulders. Um, <clears throat> want to see that inside. But if you look at Jason Peters on this next clip, he's able to switch his hands real subtly. Well, watch it, right? Outside, boom. Switches it inside for more leverage. That's what we're looking for. But that's a veteran move right there. That's a veteran move. You see his hands are on the outside right there. Um, but he, he kind of last second, he realizes that this is not going to work for me. Switches on the inside. But Jason Peters is a big cat as well. So they can get away with that type of stuff. So, But he, that's a pure veteran move right there, making sure that he avoids the hole. And they gave Cooper Rush a nice, clean pocket. You know, And th again, Tyler Smith, you know, Zach Martin doing a great job creating that pocket. You look on that right side, Terrence Steele, excellent, excellent pass protection. You couldn't ask for a better pass protection uh, for your quarterback in this particular play. Um, and they just kept doing it over and over and over again. But again, the Cowboys, you know, this was a this was an area of concern, right? They needed to pick up another offensive lineman. I think Jason Peters showed that he can. He's got some left in the tank now. Having Tyler Smith there, putting him at left tackle does help that offensive line. Jason Peters doesn't have to move around a lot that much. He can play inside at the guard position. All right, here's a red zone play right here. Uh, you're going to see that alley. It's going to open up. Boom, right there. I, I, I don't know if if this was Zeke. I'm pretty. I, is that Zeke? I can't tell if that's Zeke or not. I think it is Zeke. I'm not sure why Zeke didn't just take that alley right there in between the guard and Tyler Smith. Um, because the guard ends up picking up 48 and then it's just him and 29 in that hole. Now, if you look over to the far right, uh, Turpin, he's running in, possibly try to get the block on 29, right? As you can see there, but somehow, you know, but at the point of contact, the line was set. They just had more guys in the backfield, at least in the linebacking in the box. Um, and they kind of, they, 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 they stopped this play, but I wanted to show this play because look at the front itself. I mean, they got a hat on hat on hat with the exception of the linebackers. And for the most part, number 29, really, he's the guy that kind of spoils the play. And I think maybe Zeke might have misread this a little bit because there's there's a hole right there. There's definitely a hole right there that he probably should have ran through, but he ended up didn't. So it is what it is. But really, I thought they had a good they, they had a good play design, but uh, the Giants just had that one extra guy in the box because why? They were getting killed. All right. Final play. Um, look at this as another like a little stretch play zone stretch to the to the right of the offense there. Again, hat on hat. They got they're accounting for everybody. This was a good blocking play. Now they didn't get a big play from it, but they did get some positive yards. But if you watch at the point of the snap, these guys are getting after it. They're getting after it. You're, they're, they're creating holes for these running backs to get and slip up in there. Sometimes you're not going to get 10, 15 yards. Sometimes you only need two or three, four yards to keep them chains going. And that's exactly what the Cowboys did in this particular play. Um, and overall, you know, they did a really solid job. And I think they're only going to get better. Um, you know, hopefully one day Tyron Smith will come back and maybe he can go back to left tackle. But anyway, that's all I got, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the clip. We'll see you on the next one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and watch my show on NFL Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.